Repeat after me on the orders of the Neocon Thought Police. Novichok is the deadliest nerve agent known to man. Only Russia can make this. Novichok is the deadliest nerve agent known to man. It kills within two minutes. Only Russia can make this. Only Russia can make this. Novichok is the deadliest nerve agent known to man. Repeat after me on the orders of the Neocon Thought Police. Novichok is not so deadly. It is not so fast acting. It doesn't necessarily kill people. It doesn't necessarily kill people. Welcome to NCBC, the Neil Clark Broadcasting Corporation. Just think of the stories we've been told the last month, the official government, UK government narrative on the Skripal case. We were told, of course, that it was done by Russia. Novichok was the nerve agent that was used and only Russia could make this Novichok. It comes from Russia. Only Russia could make it. And it was deadly. It was eight times deadlier than VK. There was no way back. There's no way back from a Novichok attack. In fact, the Times newspaper actually reported the death of Sergei Skripal on its front page on the 12th of March. We were told just a week ago that uh, the, there was a chance that the life support machines of the Skripals would be switched off. And now, what has happened? Well, early in the week, we heard from the CEO of Port and Down, the, government, the government's own chemical weapons laboratory, that in fact, they couldn't confirm that the nerve agent, uh, the Novichok, which, they, which is the government said was used, actually came from Russia. Even though, of course, our own foreign secretary, Boris Johnson, had actually said on German TV that a guy from Port and Down had told him there was no doubt that it was from Russia. And on top of that, we've had the miraculous Lazarus star recovery of the Skripals. But it only came out because of a phone call of made between the Yulia's cousin and Yulia in hospital. This was broadcast on Russian television and Yulia said that she'd been uh, awake. She'd been uh, awake for a week. She was doing fine. And when asked about her father, she replied he was doing fine too. Everybody's doing fine. Completely at odds with what we were being told here in Britain, that these people, these Skripals were on death's door. So what happened? Hilariously, the government narrative had to change. And then we were told that actually Yulia Skripal was recovering and her father, who the Times had reported as dead on the 12th of March, was uh, improving rapidly. Talk about an Easter resurrection miracle. That's brought to you by the Neocon uh, establishment. Quite honestly, well, I've been on television saying that the U official UK government narrative has had more holes in it than a slab of Swiss cheese. I think we've got to update that now and say it's got more holes in it than a Tetley's tea bag. I ask you. We were told that Novichok was probably sprayed on the front door. The same front door that, of course, police officers had gone in and out of without any ill effects. Everything we were told, basically, has now been uh, contradicted. And I think we're now in Emperor's New Clothes territory. Remember the Hans Christian Andersen fairy story where the t good townsfolk were basically intimidated from coming out and saying, look, the Emperor's got new clothes, got, got no clothes. They were actually scared of coming out saying that. And it's the same position in Britain today. All of us, everybody can see that the government narrative just simply doesn't add up. There's so many inconsistencies in, in it. But people are scared of coming out because they fear they'll be branded a conspiracy theorist, a Kremlin apologist, a Kremlin agent, a Putin supporter, or a useful idiot. So that's where we are today. The establishment is in big, big trouble over this story. And what happens next? Well, I woke up this morning to the news headlines Guess what? The headline wasn't about the total unravelling of the narrative about the Skripals and the case. No, it was another story that there had been an unverified chemical weapons attack in Syria. And guess who the US had been blaming it on? Why? Russia. 
no further comment is necessary. Tune in next time for more from NCBC. Cheerio.